Welcome to Amicast, podcast about Amiga computers. I'm your host, Krzysztof Radzikowski, but call me Christoph or Radzik. But soon software came along, uh, like Soundtrack there and Aegis Sonics, that let you really manipulate the sounds. So, as well as uh, music, uh, it was also very good for sound effects. And that was one of the biggest things uh, with the games I, I worked on, games from Team 17. A um, game called Alien Breed. Um, I... <laughs> I just bought a new sampler, uh, it was an AppS 950, and I, 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 we'd also just had a newly born, uh, we, we had a new cat and newly born kittens, and I, as a test, tried to sample their kittens. They had a really cute, uh, really high pitched me out. Um, one of them, I got into my AppS 950 sampler, which was attached to a keyboard, and I accidentally um, leant on the bottom few octaves of the keyboard and played like a chord with this little kid in me out. And it sounded really scary. So I added an explosion to it, and that became the alien death sound on Alien Breed. So, <laughs> so in Alien Breed, you're actually killing poor defences of the kittens. <laughs> so honestly, no animals were harmed. But <laughs> so yeah, um, how did I get into um, to games? Um, there was an advert in one of the game magazines uh, asking for demos to put on my, uh, what was called a public domain disc. Now, what is public domain for the younger people here? Um, they used to sell their music and sound and graphics for the price of the disc. Um, today, equivalent might be YouTube, where it's all free and you put stuff on there. So I sent him one of my tracks, which is a, a rendition of Jean-Michel Jarre's Rendezvous 4. And they, to my amazement, they liked it so much they put it on one of their cover discs. Because that was called 17 bit software, which was supposed to be one bit better than the rest. <laughs> yeah. um, and they turned into Team 17 later. Uh, when they became Team 17, I was able to do um, music like Super Frog and um, Project X, Alien Breed, that we mentioned earlier, and uh, Body Blows, and games like that. I just wanted to ask Chris a little bit more about the technical side of the media because Chris went one further. Instead of playing four channels of sound, he managed to play seven. Yeah. And I want to know how that was done and why, etc. Yeah, so I was always like looking to push the envelope and uh, the four channels um, were nice, but uh, I tried to do the same thing that I had done with the C64 and I actually had a um, colleague or friend of ours, uh, Jochen Hippel, he made a uh, emulation of my sound system on the Atari ST. And the Atari ST doesn't have um, any hardware channels. You have to do it all in software on the CPU. And so I asked him if I could take his source code, look at it and adapt it. Uh, because my idea was to um, use the four channels that are mixed on the CPU and output that on one of the Amiga channels and keep three of the remaining Amiga channels pristine because there was, I think, one or two more systems that mixed channels but they would do like two on each of the Amiga channels and then you had eight, I think it was called Octolizer or something like that uh, but they all sounded degraded to me and some of the uh, sounds that I like to use um, like bell type sounds and things like that, they wouldn't sound good at all. So my seven voice system had the advantage of the three regular Amiga channels where I played those sounds and then on the four mixed ones I did bass and drums and things that didn't need that high end. And uh, that became the, um, the intro melody for Turrican 2 is probably the most famous. And uh, yeah. Definitely uh, got a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. 
Can I ask the sound guy if I if I play something on this? We'll play through the speakers. No? Yeah, great. Um, so yeah, recently I created an album um, uh, called The Amiga Works. I got uh, Kickstarter funding. Actually, Chris did this first, um, which I'll tell you about uh, in a minute. Um, and I, I kind of got on board. Uh, Chris helped me get some backers as well, which is cool. Um, yeah, we swapped a remix in here, and Chris did a track for my album and I did one for his. Um, I wanted to play you a few of these uh, tracks. I know a lot of you have got this album already. Um, it's available over there, and I can sign it if you want. Um, so I'm going to play you the before I remixed it and afterwards of a uh, couple of them. Yeah, so this one, um, if it plays, will be the Super Frog uh, Spooky Track. <laughs>
find the Amiga, uh, the Amiga version. Yeah. Yeah.
But I actually, I have a little story about that. Um, that track obviously being so important, I kind of like, uh, I mean I worked on it over like the course of uh, over a year. And then when it came to the mastering, I had like a few days left before I was finishing it off and sending it off. And I worked on that track and I had it like in shape where I was okay, but I was super tired also. And it was actually my wife, Tracy, <laughs> who came to me and said, this doesn't sound right yet. And uh, I said, like, oh, I'm so tired, I don't want to do this anymore, and whatever, so, but she pushed me, and uh, I did it again, and I actually, like an hour later or so, it sounded so much better, and I had tears in my eyes, and I was, I knew that was it, and so, a little bit of credit goes to her for pushing me that time. Uh, one more little thing. I, obviously, Chris and I have been going quite a while now, and people keep asking, well, me and him probably, you know, do you, are you still going to keep writing music? Um, but we are, and of course, musicians don't retire, they decompose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you for your Really Okay, not play. <laughs> Dance for us. Okay. And again, you fine. Okay, uh, next up, Frank. Frank, who is it? Five minutes. Frank, five, yeah, you get five minutes. Frank, guys, he'll introduce himself, but it's quite complicated what he'll be. He did a lot. He's not a familiar face, but he got a familiar function in Commodore. And hopefully he has some great stories. Some filth? Do you got some filth about yeah. Commodore? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I won't tell. You won't tell. More beer. <laughs> Into this guy. And he, uh, oh, I'll start with the raffle. Yeah, the raffle. Yeah, the raffle. Why can't I do this? He brought a laptop bag and some hats. I'll just get some numbers. I'll decide what size it is. His friend brought a laptop bag. 646. Six. So anyone with 646? 646? 646? Yep, sure, No, 848-848-646-848. No, 728-728-728-853. <laughs> Seven to five wins a USB stick. You got USB sticks, with you, Frank? Yep. Good. You can get, can you get one? As with the hats and the bag, get, get me everything. You just want something. We love you. Eight five three. Anyone got eight five three? I'm not. I'm not pulling the missing number in the phone. Six oh three. Six, oh, three. Yeah. yeah. I'm so happy with you. Thank you. Where's the guy who won the... That's... I'm gonna go badly. That guy won very well. I'll try again. Just draw your mom. Yeah, just get it. Don't bother. Okay, Frank's set up. I'll, I'll give him... I'll give, give, Put a number for that. I'd like to we'll do that later. Okay, ready? Hi there. Oh, it's hard to keep up with the guys with the music. Just the Where are the Where are the friends from Germany? Anybody there? Whoa, some hands. So you can see. Yep, I'm from Germany. In the meantime, I live in Switzerland, so I have both nationalities. I'm Swiss and I'm German, and I'm very proud of it. And what's my relationship to Commodore and Amiga? I did work for Commodore in the Frankfurt office between 89 and 92. And I realized you, there's a lot of uh, knowledge, technology knowledge over here, which is great, which I appreciate. But then on the other hand, there need, there need to be people who sell these things. So I was one of these uh, salespeople. Effectively, I was a sales manager. 
and I sold the stuff, all the stuff, Amigas, PCs, monitors, all the equipment we had. And uh, I only came in touch with the organizers a couple of months ago, Marvin and friends. And I'm delighted to be here. And I pulled out some old documentation and other things. And um, it's quite heavy and I'm glad I still have it. This is still my original sales brochure from 1990. So anybody can have a look afterwards. All the quite some technical information but it's more sales and marketing related, so let's share this afterwards. And where did I start? Some pictures. The virus of IT infected me in 1974. That's me on the left-hand side, my first calculator. Unfortunately, not a Commodore calculator, but a Texas one. And then, is that me on the right-hand side? Yeah, 1982. I did study at, uh, at an institute in Frankfurt, so I'm a learned programmer, I learned uh, IBM assembler, I learned Fortran, I learned COBOL, I learned BASIC, Pascal, blah 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 blah, blah. You, uh, you name it, and you can see these nice terminals, the green screen terminals, BT100 based on prime computers that time ago, great time, and then I decided, stepped out of the software business and went into hardware. first. I sold cat cam monitors, very expensive that time ago. In 1989, I joined Commodore in Frankfurt as a salesperson. And the first thing I learned was this, the organization of Commodore in Germany. And you see, that time ago, there has been four divisions. So we had a PC division, we had a networking division, there was an Amiga division, and there was a consumer division as well. And in the second level, you see the products during that time. So each division was able to sell all these products below. And the question is, where do you sell and how do you sell? You could sell in Germany to the big distributors like MediaMarkt or Saturn, or you had specific distributors or how we would call it these days, value added resellers. So these have been the structures in Germany and I've been in the two divisions on the left hand side. So I was part of the PC division and the networking division. Some of the old stuff I pulled out. That's one of these historical sheets where you can see how we did promote the history of Commodore, how did we promote the products. And as we all know, over 1 million C64 have been sold. So this is one of the pack pictures from the Commodore Computer Museum which uh, we took quite a while ago, because that already happened in 86, even before I joined Commodore. Now, the biggest fascination for myself always was, beside all the technology, was the marketing. And Commodore in Germany spent millions of millions of German marks into proper marketing, with, for example, sponsoring a football club, Bayern München, Höhn, and all these people. So a lot of money was spent there. But then in parallel, because of the speed of the MIGA, the speed of the PCs that time ago, Commodore made a big point in having a speedy presentation. So what we also did is we sponsored the Formula 3 championship team, the Euphra 391, based in southern Germany, and uh, we have been able to take our resellers to Nürburgring, to Hockenheimring and other places. And you can see me here on the right hand side in yellow with one of these two racing cars, with the two racing cars. Did you know how much the cars cost these days? Where Commodore was sponsoring and on the left hand side is one of the partners I was looking after. And then I said, this is so fascinating for me. Commodore became part of my brain, so I started to develop an own formula. And I said it was a Formula M, the monocycle. So that's me motorcycling in a Commodore shirt with my daughter in 1992. And that's not only a joke, we really used it in certain cities in central Germany where I was responsible for. So I was in Frankfurt, I was in Wiesbaden, I was in Saarbrücken, and Karlsruhe and other places on a unicycle, fully equipped with Commodore gear, head cap, etc. Now, you see this little thing down there? What's that? It was a little box. And in that box 
was the actual brochure. And we did spread the brochure to all people, and I brought, I still have one version of that brochure. It's this thing, and it's called Commodore Technology Group. And if you open it up, you find all the products. That's cleverly made. So here you have all the PC products from 91. And then there's also a huge list. Yeah. A lot of paper, huh? nothing online. And there you had the, the Amiga product line. So 91, 92, in this brochure, the full product line of Commodore, which we were able to sell as many. So come to me, join me, and we'll check it out afterwards. So all those. Yeah, maybe. Good, but then not only the standard products, we had additional products like the flight simulator, A32, was a great thing, so good, 799 German marks that time ago, big deal. We also had, and we just heard from our musical guys here, there was the Mega 500 musical set, fully equipped, and I think you checked it already. We said, wow, that was impossible. In 92, incredible, huh? incredible. And also, we started the first Amiga Championship in Germany. We put Bart Simpson onto the page. Uh, this guy was very popular, I think he's still popular. I also have the original brochures here, and you can see there is a, it's a championship package. $8.99 was the sales price. And um, with the erosion of the pricing, that price went down pretty dramatically and pretty quick. So again, approach me afterwards and I'll show you the original and interesting brochures. What else? 20 years party in Wiesbaden. My former boss was Helmut Joos, managing director of uh, Commodore Germany. And the who and who in Germany has been invited. We had this huge balloon, hot air, nothing to do with product. It was a hot air balloon. And uh, you see on the right hand side, there's Howard Carpendale, several stars have been engaged. On the left hand side, so you can see Helmut Joos. And Helmut was quite ruthless in selling the Amiga product. So whenever you have been a salesperson and you have not been able to achieve your targets, you have been kicked out of the company. And I have an interesting story because I work in Frankfurt. Normally I'm the early guy. I get up early in the office, nobody is there, you can work for an hour or two, which, which I uh, prefer. And the day before, I met my, um, I met my manager and said, oh, tomorrow we have some customer visits. I said, okay, cheers, good afternoon, see you tomorrow morning. In the morning, came to the office, there was light in the office, I said, what's going on, who's there? I went in and the foreigner was sitting in the office, I said, who are you? And he said, I'm your new boss. What's going on? So, they pulled my old boss during the night, told him he's no longer good. He had to put his stuff in the middle of the night. I came in the morning, there was a new boss. So that was a typical behavior of Commodore in Germany that time ago. So the absolute must was you had to fulfill your targets. Tough business. Tough business, but good things which we had. For example, this is one of the uh, of the foils, and I really mean foils, it's not paper, it's for sure it's not iPad. I brought one of these, and I did more, you can see this. These are, these are, it's a real foil, probably have to put it on here. So this was the back side, with all the details in German. This was the front side. This is how we did sell the stuff successfully, and we not only had music, we also had artists, there is this uh, chap, Axel Meikert, he's still around, he's a guy from Berlin, he's an artist. He was one of the first guys who used the Amiga 2000 and other Amiga products to be very, very creative. All possible in the 90s. All possible in the 90s. I also brought one of these internal memos from 1990. This was a sales tool for us where we could create good stories. And out of the list, and for those of you who can speak German, read German, and understand what's on it. For the others, I picked three ones. And it said, um, entertainers like Frank Zappa, B.B. King, Millie Vanilli. 
They don't want to get rid of the Amiga. They want to have it, which I found some, some crazy names even today. Also, maybe you don't know, special effects in the movie Robocop 2 have been made with the Amiga. And this amazes me most. We all know the city of Atlanta has applied for the Olympic Games a long time ago. And the documents, the presentation, the preparation, the video, the music, etc., everything which was required was done with an Amiga. It was done with an Amiga. And we all know that they win the Olympic Games. So, great success for the Amiga. And then we had the CDTV. These are two micro cassettes. I still carry them around. I tested them out. They work. Amazing, and you find the live spots from it's uh, June 91 when the product was introduced. So these are the six live spots somebody could choose and present that in local media like SF, etc. Also, simulation has been big, not in the way we think currently simulation is, but we sold to partners who wanted to promote the product, the Commodore Racing Simulator. So it was one of these monocoques, these monocoque pits with a Commodore logo. They had a screen in front. Everything was driven by the Amiga 3000 that time ago. And if you would find six megabyte, 100 megabyte hard drive, these were huge numbers in the numbers, huge numbers. So this was a great success as a sales tool. And now, and who knows what this is? Some people raise hands. It's the cardboard. I brought one with me. So that's the cardboard. This thing currently sells, uh, sells for about 19 euros, 19 dollars. You put it on. You put your mobile phone, your Android. You take a specific application. I brought some of these applications on my iPhone. So if somebody is interested to watch how it works, you can do it afterwards. And for sure, there are a bit higher sophisticated versions. So yesterday I was in Berg and I gave a presentation about one of the latest and greatest in Samsung, which the Galaxy S6, which is really incredible. And um, this is not only the future, it's really used. For example, if you have a company, if you have stock, you work with augmented reality. So you can look at your stock equipment, the computer recognizes the stock, says in that box we have the following product, goes live to your ERP, says you're running out of stocks, please place an order, something is wrong, etc. So you can manage your whole company in a logistic perspective with these tools. And we think in the next five or ten years this will be the future. And the fantastic thing is this has been possible already in the 90s with the media. Isn't it crazy? Isn't it crazy? And only these days we get this these tools. So, coming to an end, because I've been asked <coughs> to cut down for 15 minutes, another tool which I really enjoyed was the Commodore or Amiga cocktail bar. So, to promote new products, to promote offerings of, a, of an office space, etc., we have been able to sell these products, one or two bar mixers, two very friendly and dressed ladies and all the cocktails has been named by products of Commodore. And look at the lower left corner, there is an Amiga Angel's Kiss. And I've asked the bartender to make one for me. Unfortunately, he hasn't had the grenadine and the agricultural brandy. But, uh, where's my drink? Yeah, somebody said. It's over there, so it's an imagination. What has happened that time ago, I'm still proud, I'm very excited being part of the Commodore and Amiga Unity. So, cheers, see me on the boat, see me later on, let's test these great things. Thank you. Thank you Just more German coming up soon. <laughs> Jens, Jens is... Wait! Thank you. Oh, we got more from Raffle. Oh, more Raffle.
get rid of these. There's still one couple of numbers. I still got this drawing for number 798. Seven, nine, eight. And we got this laptop bags, Frank. Frank bought some laptop bags. I'm gonna get a number for that. You need to set up? Pardon? You need something to set up? Um, no, okay. I do my thing. I love this. Seven nine six. Seven nine six. Oh my God. Seven nine six. Or six oh four. Six oh four. Well, I'm trying to do this random. Uh, nine six nine. Nine six nine. Seven six nine. Seven six nine. Yeah, we got a winner. Wow. So many people have the Amiga 500 in their homes, almost unexpanded, um, standard one megabyte uh, chip RAM expansion, uh, well, tripod expansion was in there, um, but uh, that's about it. All these uh, Amigans who have fond memories of uh, Amiga games, they still have their Amiga 500, but um, it wasn't usable. And um, with the ACI 500, I tried to, to make the machine usable to uh, uh, provide a tool that lets you turn the Amiga 500 into a WHD load machine. And um, that was a huge success. Over the course of uh, um, selling this product, it, it, was, it was really selling like hotcakes. And um, I decided to make a, a follow-up, the ACA 500 Plus. It's called Plus, but it also works on the non-Plus Amiga 500. And um, um, I have mainly addressed uh, the trouble that we had with uh, certain mainboard revisions. Uh, revision 3 and revision 5 NTSC mainboards didn't work. They do work with this one. Then uh, many people criticized that uh, memory size wasn't enough of, on the ACA 500, so I have quadrupled memory on this one. It comes with 8 megabytes. Um, I have increased the, uh, the amount of flash, um, which was half a meg before, now it's 8 meg. And um, then when I was solving the problems with, the, uh, um, with those Revision 3 Amigas, um, I had to uh, build the card totally asynchronous. That's a totally technical thing, probably you, you might not be interested in, but uh, going asynchronous uh, gives me the chance to, to run my local CPU at pretty much any speed. These 68EC000 processors, they are rated 10 megahertz, and um, uh, I was just trying to overclock them, see where, where I can go, because I know that uh, on the Minimic and the Zeus 68K, they run as, uh, at up to 50 megahertz, and um, so I, I was trying to increase in uh, um, steps of uh, around 7 megahertz, and uh, I was able to crank up the speed up to 42.5 megahertz and um, couldn't go any further because my local uh, clock design doesn't allow anything faster. I couldn't get it to crash, so I decided to leave that in. Um, so I will only guarantee it to run at 14 megahertz, like the predecessor. But uh, you will have the chance to, uh, to choose overclocking up to 42.5 megahertz. And um, as you can see, there's uh, some more, uh, it looks slightly different, of course, with the, um, uh, this is a prototype, I will remain, I, I will keep the, the PCB color at black. Um, and here's a little extra PCB that uh, gives uh, 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 double, 
seven segment display. Um, it'll be so totally software controllable. We will probably use it for early diagnosis and maybe for megahertz display because it's a retro computer after all. And uh, I think we didn't have that many megahertz displays on an Amiga. Um, megahertz display is retro. We gotta have that. Um, I'm. I will try to. Uh, implement a few more things. There's quite a lot of work to do still on this one, so I'm hoping that uh, we will have it available for Christmas business this year. And um, the uh, the price will be slightly higher, actually considerably higher, uh, given that the, uh, the predecessor was uh, only 79 euros. Um, it's going to be around 130 euro, but uh, I I'm confident that uh, you'll still buy it, because uh, it provides so much more. Okay, that's so much for the Amiga 500 Plus, and the other project I'm working on is um, a tiny card for the Amiga 1200, which was initially planned as an expansion for the ACA 500 only, but um, many of the resellers, including uh, Amiga Kit, are gone. Um, were telling me that uh, a really cheap expansion for the Amiga 1200 is something that we might need. And um, what we will have is uh, two versions of the Amiga, of, of the ACA 1221. It uses uh, a 68020 processor. Um, one version uses an EC020 processor, uh, comes with uh, um, just over 10 megabytes of memory, and it will be clocked at 28 megahertz. Um, it has uh, local expansion ports, so you can uh, connect a uh, uh, red growth uh, USB controller without opening the Amiga 1200. And um, the other version uses uh, a full 68020, but uh, that is a 16 megahertz uh, version of the CPU. And uh, so I can only uh, guarantee it to run at that speed. Um, but uh, what I found out is that even if the CPUs are rated 60 MHz, most of them run at higher speeds and therefore we will uh, uh, try a fully new business model on, the, on that um, card with upgradeability for memory and for CPU clock uh, where you can just buy upgrades as uh, licenses that, so you can just um, buy, buy a license and uh, enter a code and then speed up your card. But uh, mainly, I'm, I'm aiming at uh, making the hobby Amiga slightly cheaper, because uh, all of you guys know that uh, used hardware on auction platforms reaches outrageous prices, and uh, you buy it, and you don't even have warranty on the, the, on, on the parts that you buy. Um, what I'm trying is to, to keep the hobby Amiga at reasonable prices, and that's why I designed this one with a um, well, seemingly weak processor at, at first sight, but uh, at 28 MHz, a 68020 with Passman is already strong enough to run most of the games in uh, at acceptable speeds, and to be honest, isn't that what we all want? Play a nice game using the WHD low machine? And um, so the target price for the, uh, for the little um, 16 megahertz, or it's going to run at uh, 17 megahertz uh, standard, um, it's going to come with 9 megabytes of memory as a, um, a standard. And my target price is uh, just under 80 euro for it. Um, I set that price so low in order to be uh, competitive against, um, uh, to compete against memory expansions for the Amiga 1200. And um, yeah, maybe I'm, uh, I can pull more Amiga 1200 people back into the hobby Amiga. And uh, maybe I can uh, have you guys help others who have, um, dig out their Amiga machines from, well, wherever they were. Um, another project that you might have heard of um, lately is uh, the C64 Reloaded. It might have, uh, well, it, it actually has brought up many very emotional um, uh, reactions from people because the demand for this board has been so big that uh, on the first day that, uh, that we launched it, our server got totally, well, DDoSed. It, uh, <laughs> um, it 
It took over five hours to sell the very first wave of these boards, and uh, it was under 100 units. Um, the server was just overloaded, uh, because so many people were trying at the same time to order one. And uh, I have to apologize to, to everyone who has been trying to get hold of uh, one of these boards. We only have limited resources, and uh, we will continue to make these. I am so confident that uh, pretty much everyone who wants one will get one. But uh, like I said, we have limited resources. But um, I know this is an Amiga meeting. This is not a C64 or 8-bit meeting. But uh, the reason why I brought this is uh, um, this is a bit of a long story how I how I got to uh, making the C64 Reloaded because in uh, in uh, fall of 2012, I started accumulating Amiga chips. I found a stock of uh, Amiga chips, um, especially Buster chips and Reject chips uh, that were required for um, for the German community. You might have heard uh, the German community has uh, built Amiga 4000 tower main boards. That, uh, some empty cards, empty boards have surfaced and. Uh, some of those people um, from the German uh, Amiga community, from the A1K community, um, were starting to build them by hand. And uh, certain key chips were missing, for example, the Buster and uh, the Bridget chip. And I have been able to, to source the Bridget chip from, uh, through a chip broker. And um, before that, I never thought about uh, finding Amiga chips or MOS chips through a chip broker. But in late 2012, I started sorting those chips. I told every chip broker I've been working with, if it's MOS or CSG, it's mine, make me an offer. <laughs> and um, that worked pretty well. I got, uh, I got some offers and I got some, uh, some addresses of people um, who do have MOS and CSG chips. And it turned out that I found stock of uh, AGA chips distributed over certain um, European locations. One had Alice, another one had Lisa chips, another one had Gale chips. And um, that, it turned out that um, uh, all, these, all these people have been buying up these chips just after the, uh, uh, just after Escom went bankrupt. And um, everyone was hoping that these chips would be worth a lot, a lot of money at some point, and, uh, but it turns out that having just the one chip in a huge quantity doesn't help you much. You need the whole chip set. And I actually managed to, to convince each and every one of them to sell his stock of chips to me. So I think, um, or I claim, should anyone know different, let me know, I claim to own the world's stock of AGA chip sets. And the reason why I'm mentioning the C64 Reloaded is this is just the beginning. I will make an Amiga Reloaded.